For this example, we identify that this is a function that has a fraction. So we have a rational function, which means we're going to be dealing with asymptotes. We're going to be dealing with weird domains and ranges. And we also want to answer the questions about where is this increasing and where is it decreasing. So first of all, we need to make sure we understand what the shape is. Now notice that this is just x minus 2. It's x to the first. It's not a square. It's not contained inside of a square. So my basic shape is going to be what we were describing earlier as this guy, the missed high five. Okay. Now that is a very poor shape, but it just gives us an idea about what it's supposed to look like. And then we're going to use those key points that we came up with a couple of videos ago to put good points, good accurate points, so we can draw our, our shape. So what's been done to this? Well, in the denominator, I see the minus 2. So it's inside the fraction, which means it's inside the main part of the function that gives us our shape, which means we shift left or right, doing the opposite of what we see. I see a minus 2, so that means I'm actually going to shift to the right two units. And then whatever I see outside of the fraction, I'm going to do a vertical shift exactly what I see. So that means I'm going to go up six units. All right, so let's take care of that. Again, when we try to draw our new x and y axes, those guys correspond to our uh, horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So I'm going up six. So go up six and draw this dashed horizontal line. Again, that's my horizontal asymptote. Go to the right two. And this dashed vertical line is my vertical asymptote. All right, so that's all we've done. We've gone to the right two and up six, and now we're going to plot our key points. Now, I suggest that we start in this upper right uh, quadrant first. So that's one and two. Here's zero, which is why we're undefined. The reciprocal of one is one. The reciprocal of two is one half. And the reciprocal of one half is two. So those are your key points. It, it's not a line, so don't try to make it a line. It's a curve. And that curve is going to fit in right here. And he's not going to cross the horizontal or the vertical asymptote. Now let's look back at the original picture that we had for our reciprocal function. All right, so it's this guy. Now, you may not know this, but there is some symmetry here. There's symmetry about a point, that point being the origin right there. So as I go over to and up one half, if I reverse that and I go to the left to and down one half, I get another point. Having point symmetry means that you could take your graph and you could rotate it 180 degrees and it would still line up exactly. And that helps us get additional points. Now we've seen other functions that have had this point symmetry, namely the cube root function and the cubing function. So if I want to copy this point, instead of going 2 and 1 half, go negative 2, negative 1 half. Instead of going 1, 1, flip that around, go negative 1, negative 1. This guy was 1 half up 2, go left 1 half and down 2. And from here, we know what our shape is. We're going to connect these points as best we can. So it looks something like this. And then this shape. He's getting closer and closer to that vertical asymptote. And then coming out here to the left, he's going to get closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote. Please understand that this curve right here never curves back down. He's getting higher and higher, very slowly, but he is getting higher and higher. Just like this guy's getting lower and lower as I go over to the right. So let's answer those questions that we had uh, in our last example. My domain should be all real numbers except for that value or values that will make my denominator zero. So I see that I have x minus two. What would make that zero? x equals two, which matches up with that vertical asymptote. So my domain is everything except for two. So there we go. And then my range. Range is going from bottom to top, 
it's the set of all y values, so bottom to top, so I'm coming from negative infinity, this guy goes up and up and up and up, and then we start to have this weird situation happens, uh, this weird situation happen when we have a y value of six. So we go up to almost six, and then union from six to infinity to get the rest of this guy as he goes up and up. All right, now we move on to the asymptotes, okay? So we can get it from the graph, we can get it from the function, it's all connected. First, your horizontal asymptote. And keep in mind that your horizontal asymptote is really describing your end behavior. As x goes toward negative infinity or positive infinity, what does this guy tend to do? Well, as x gets really, really big, you've got one over a really, really big number which gets closer to zero, which means he basically becomes meaningless and you're left with just a positive six. So that's why we have this horizontal, or this, yeah, this horizontal asymptote right here. So it's the horizontal asymptote of y equals six. Okay. Remember, the horizontal asymptote is as x gets really, really big, what does your function tend to do? This guy right here, this guy goes away, and you're left with plus six. Your vertical asymptote. Well, this is showing up for us whenever that denominator equals zero. When does the denominator equal zero? It equals zero when x equals two. See how that matches up right here with that vertical asymptote. Now let's talk about where we are increasing. So where are we increasing? Well, as I trace left to right, this guy is going down, so that's not it. This guy is also going down. So he is increasing nowhere. All right. Well, where is he decreasing? If he's not decrease. If he's not increasing anywhere, surely there are some places where he's increasing. I'm not sure what I just said there. It says surely there are places where he's decreasing. Sometimes words get weird, right? So as I go from left to right, where am I decreasing? Well, this guy's decreasing from. He's coming from negative infinity to an x value of two. I remember how we talked about this in one of the previous videos. He's decreasing on that interval, comma, not union, but comma. Where's the other interval where he's decreasing? He is decreasing on the open interval from two to infinity. So he's decreasing here, and then he's decreasing again right there. Do not put a union sign. You will get that wrong. Okay. We got one more example to wrap up this section. So. Be right back.